that the good news is uh, is because the earthquake happened in a fairly rural area, um, and so even though there's very strong shaking, there wasn't that much to damage. Uh, the towns of Ridgecrest, Ridgecrest, of course, got a significant shake and, and significant damage. I guess what we're trying to figure out now in terms of the tremors, the, the extent of the tremors, the strength of the tremors, is how, how far out could this be and could these aftershocks hit areas that could potentially you know, suffer more damage? Yeah, well, we expect uh, at least dozens of more magnitude 3 earthquakes in the next week, uh, maybe a 50 percent chance of a magnitude 5 or larger earthquake. And those will be, uh, magnitude 3 earthquakes will be felt, but they won't be damaging. And chances are that the aftershocks that come from this earthquake will be limited to the area in the fairly remote part of the Mojave Desert and, and won't contribute to significantly more damage. But if a larger earthquake happens and happens towards a more populated area, then we'd expect significantly more damage. Where is the greatest risk, uh, if you can quantify it? Uh, is it in California? Is it in Alaska? Is it up the coast in Washington state? Where's the greatest risk for a really big earthquake? Or, or is that just kind of a naive question to ask? That's a great question. The, the risk is actually the chances of an earth large earthquake happening in an area that's populated that's also vulnerable. So those three ingredients are really fundamental. California and Alaska both have enormous earthquakes, but the population in Alaska is much, much lower. So the risk, the greatest risk in the country really is in Southern California and to some degree Northern California where you have a combination of the San Andreas Fault and other faults, a large population, very large population, and then the potential for damage goes way up. David, there's a you know, long history of different kinds of earthquake events to draw on. What does this uh, experience remind you most of right now? Well, you know, California's a big state. You can put a large earthquake into a, an area and get um, relatively uh, low impacts because the, the population density in some areas is so low. But what we're really concerned about is something further west and further north or south in Los Angeles or, or San Francisco where you would certainly up the ante in terms of losses. So the, the, the losses from this are kind of expected given the low population, but we know that earthquakes are going to find population centers down the road. You know, when the first earthquake hit, David, I, I read a seismologist being quoted in a newspaper saying uh, that, that we are due for one because one typically happens between every five and ten years, and this was the largest in 20 years. Where else are we, quote, unquote, due for one, in your view? Well, we have a, what we call a hazard map of the United States and the west coast of of California is along the San Andreas Fault where we have two plates moving next to each other. That's the, one of the biggest concerns, but that goes up to the Pacific Northwest and becomes a larger fault um, that can cause problems for uh, uh, Oregon, Washington, and, uh, and Alaska. But we have faults really throughout the United States. It's just that the rates of earthquakes in California is much higher uh, than it is in, in the rest of the country.